Hi, I'm not yet dead, and welcome to well, a look at the new Fernland and Vicon DLC. I hope I just pronounced that correctly. I've no idea if I did or not. Uh, I did watch the stream about it. Oof, what was that? About a week ago, so ago. Fernland was it? Fernland, Vicon, Vicon. I don't know. Anyway, it's the new stuff, and here it all is, all laid out. Ah, oh, luckily there's a bit of a, a demo thing going on. They brought some equipment down letting us test it out so um yeah it's all here as you can see there's quite a bit to it quite a lot going on so uh well we'll try and use it all but uh, you might have to bear with me a little bit it might take a while and uh i've got a selection of trusty steeds to help me in my uh, in my task a couple of new ones too actually uh so yeah let's see what we do right so uh where do we start goodness me um well, I guess a quick look in store, really. Hey, Tit. How you doing? Uh, did you get any much further with them, them trains? Uh, where should we start? Tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the... We'll, we'll try and look at them as items as well. But we'll start out in under brands. And there are some under both... Uh, there are some under Kvernland, but there are some under Vicon. Um, some of them you can you can brand as well separately individually. So it's all nicely marked out. Kvern on the bike and equipment pack. Uh, there's I don't know how many. There, there's lots. There's lots of pieces of equipment. Let's put just lots. Um, oh dear. <laughs> it takes some getting. It's worth it. I I I used to have some frustrations with it, and I think I might have talked about this before. And if I haven't, I'll tell you the story sometime. But uh, yeah, it, it's worth it. It's a fun game. It's good. I must do some more, I must do another train stream actually. Um, yeah, so, so we've got a plough, a uh, couple of cultivators, um, a small seed drill, uh, a slightly larger seed drill. How big is that one? Six metres. I basically laid them out. I haven't watched anyone else's videos. I did watch the giant stream last week. Um, I haven't seen anything. I haven't tried any of this stuff yet. I've literally just bought them down from the store. Uh, there's a, a seed tank. There's a really, really, really big cedar. Yeah, that's a cedar. There's a planter, quite a big planter, actually, that one, that's nine meters. There's an even bigger planter at 12 meters. And um, and these sprays, these are quite fun. So the eye extra comfort, uh, you, they, they've all got variable uh, widths. So we'll have a look at those. Then we've got, of course, a front tank for that, which is kind of cool. Um, a, a, an amazing, if very expensive, trailed uh, sprayer uh, which also has variable widths um, and then we've got a um, fertilizer spreader which also has variable widths oh cool then you're joining me on the journey Tips. that's nice uh, and then a you know one of the old swinging out to the side mowery things I'm not a big fan of those but it's a quite a cool design actually looks pretty good then we've got a tether and a wrapper uh, which has a pretty nifty function on it. We'll have a look at that's just another mod. So that's all of them in the Cavern land. Um, and then in what was it? Vicon, Vicon. There we go. So that's that's in game already. So there's a front mower, a rear mower, a windrower, and the fast bale, which I'm so looking forward to giving a go. Uh, that's about it, really. So let's we'll go around them one by one, and then we'll have a quick look at them in store too. I'm dying, dying to try this. I've been looking forward to this ever since it was announced last year as one of the packs from one of the shows, the Eye Plow. It's only two and a half meters, which is a little bit disappointing, but it looks pretty cool. And it has this, the Paco Mat. So this um, is, uh, sorry, my headphones decided to switch off because it's not loud enough. Um, uh, yeah, so my son has a toy one of these and so ever since I found out it was coming to FS, I was like, oh, that's awesome. He has the Britons one. Uh, so actually what we'll do is we'll go through install plows. Plows. See if we can find them. So here we go. Here it is, the I plow. This is without, so you can have it with or without the packer map, which is kind of cool. 
So the the idea of the packer mat is is actually if, uh, from from watching giants, it um, it sort of you know flattens out the furrows really. It's not really a cultivator, but they represented that in game as being a cultivator. So you plow and you cultivate. You can have it with or without. It is an eight thousand pound euro option, which is quite a lot of money actually. Um, but it you know means you plow and you cultivate at the same time, and it looks amazing. So we'll have a look at that, that looks quite fun. They're the only options on that. Uh, then going into cultivators, we've got the two cultivators. So I'll have a quick look at these and then we'll go and, we'll go and start playing. So we've got the Enduro Pro 5000F, which is a five meter cultivator. No options, looks pretty cool. Needs 240 horses. Uh, nice, it's a cultivator, it looks good. And then this one, the Turbo 8000. 7.7 .7 meters, which is slightly unusual, needs 400 horsepower. Uh huh. Um, but it's just a cultivator. I say just a cultivator. It's a pretty cool looking cultivator, but it is just a cultivator. Um, it because it does look like if it might, um, you know, it's got these sort of big tines at the front, which look pretty sharp. But I mean, wow, they look really good. Actually, they look really good. Cool. Let's grab a tractor. It was. I need to do some ploughing. Right. So we'll need something beefy. Let's let's try the new John Deere, shall we? I only got this the other day. I haven't used it yet. So let's take a look. I bought some land specifically for the purposes of doing this. probably do the front weight on here but we'll manage so I'm actually gonna I haven't got my side panel in I couldn't bother to I got home for work really late uh, so let's see so fold plow so you fold it up that is really loud so you fold it up for transport which is pretty cool actually I rather like that And you take it out to where it is you might want to plough. Obviously, sorry, that was a bit obvious. And then you just unfold it as you would. You know, ploughs do different things, but of course this one's the interesting one because it's got the the packer mat thing, which it holds really, really well in position, which is pretty cool. Then what you can do is in that position, you can see it says activate packer. So in that position is basically with the packer off. So you just lower it down. And if I put on create fields, which I could do actually, so allow create fields, and we'll plow, and it's plowing, and that's a bit cool. And frankly, for this row, that's all we need it to do, because you know it's the first row of our field. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's a plow, really. It's a pretty cool plow. Okay, so say that's enough. Spin it around. And then of course, as with all of these sort of plows like this, you'll need to turn it because the pack is on the wrong side and you're about to go back and go the other way. But now, because we've got a bit that we ploughed, we can activate the packer. <laughs> you need to be a little bit careful, I suppose, when you're doing it like this. But anyway, it's not its not the best plough in the world for doing this. But you can do. And you lower it down. And there you go. We will cultivate. You need to be pretty decent with your ploughing, but we can cultivate as we plough. That's pretty cool, like that. Oh, that's fun. Actually, you didn't see it going around. That's pretty cool. Let's 
Let's get up. Just for the sake of argument, let's just with it all because I, I love the animations, the way it sorts itself out. See, I mean, you wouldn't really want to use this for cutting a new field and cultivating it at the same time. Uh, turn the plow, usual L1 square. Here. You can end up with a very funny shape field if you try and do it like this. But for purposes of uh, example, ah, oh, that's really cool. I love that. I'm not being desperately accurate with it, it has to be said. In fact, I'm really not being accurate at all with it, but there you go. I'm just a bit too obsessed with seeing how it looks. But actually, you know, if you're doing this on a nice neat on a nice neat field, or you'd already cut your field, that would be brilliant. I like that. So let's not mess it up anymore. We'll limit it to fields. Deactivate the packer. Fold it up. So you could just plough with that as it is, and fold it back up again. Take the weight off a little bit, and you're all good. I like that. That may be finding its way onto my farm. I need a new plough. So there you go, there's the plough. The iPlough 2500. Oh, then you have to unfold it again so you can put it down. Okay. Well, while it does that. <coughs> So let's grab a cultivator. The problem is, of course, I've not ploughed a, a field big enough to cultivate. So let's take a fast tractor. I don't know if this is powerful enough, but we'll give it a go. In theory, it shouldn't be. Unfortunately, the only thing now with uh, cultivation is that all of my fields are really, really long way away, and I haven't had time to create a brand new field. But in the meantime, we can admire its wondrousness. So the Enduro Pro 5000F, yeah, that's a little bit heavy for this tractor. The big one, I, have to, I had to be careful because the big one will need to put on the class. But actually, it's all right if you take it easy. So let's see, unfold lower. It's a cultivator. That's what you normally do with cultivators. It looks pretty cool. It's nice to have something different, really. Sorry about this, so we'll get to a field and then we'll <laughs> try it out. We may not bother with the big one. Let's see how we're doing at time at the end. And then we'll grab a couple of those cedars. I don't think we need to see them all in action, to be fair. But I've got some fields ready and waiting, so um, that will make sense actually to make some use of the machinery while we've got it. Um, mind you, not probably saving the game, it cost me a fortune to lease this stuff. Right, being very careful to avoid our test field. Very careful. So Jim, if you're listening, if you could invent a way that you can change location of where you place your stuff, that would be really helpful. Because then I could immediately reset it all to the farm where I've got loads of fields and stuff. But not to worry. So fold it out. It's going to be a little bit slow because it's slightly underpowered, but it's doing it. And actually that's a rather nice cultivator, I quite like that. So again, remind me cultivator so it was yeah so it's supposed to have 240 horsepower which it clearly doesn't five meters i'm not worried that i didn't do it straight that's pretty cool it cultivates there you go i put my horses in look yeah i quite like that right 
next. Maybe we'll get around to testing the other big, the the, um, the other cultivator a bit later on. So we've got a selection of cedars. Uh, so let's wrong button. Sorry, cedars, cedars, cedars. Here we go. Yes, I've got horses and chickens in now. Uh, so the e drill maxi like it. Ooh, and it's a direct sower. That's cool. Does any seed? No fertilizer option, but that's okay. You know, we could go seed that bit we just cultivated. Uh, three meters. So it's a, I mean, it, we've we've had similar looking to Fernland cedars before, but it is quite a nice one. It's ever so slightly different design to the ones that we've had. It's more modern. But yeah, I like that. Only 130 horsepower. And then next to it this one here this is a pretty cool device actually is this a is this a direct so as well oh no wrong one so this one then is the df2 plus ngs 101 f35 okay and yes it is a direct so oh that's a bit cool so this one doesn't have any um, capacity of its own as such. It needs it needs the hopper. Gosh, I quite like that. Go into it. There's no options. That's good. You can see the hoses. They're ready. Six meters width. 260 horsepower needed. Nice. Good looking piece of kit. Here's the front hopper. So we'll look at that in a second. But it's it's a seat hopper at the end of the day. Uh, again there's the hoses that go onto it and it's just for seed not fertilizer hey Nightwolf how you doing and then next to it we'll have a look at all these in a sec but while we're in the store we'll keep bouncing in and out so here's the next cedar this is a nice cedar I like this one 12 meters not really looked at them in store yet but it's it's you know we've got a few a little bit like this but it is a nice looking one decent sized tank 6,000 litres it certainly cost me enough to fill it up I noticed this morning 12 meters width it's 230 horsepower so it's not not crazy on the old horsepower and then there should be ah, of course all the others are in the planter so let's look at these yeah so that's that's the one that needs the front tank front tank is here the DF2 pretty cool and then here's the big the big beast I mean it's it's you know it's good stuff it's all the detail they look really really good model mods I like them or mods you know what I mean models models cool let's go see some of these in action then so I'll tell you what we'll do we'll grab the smallest tractor and we'll take the um, <coughs> the smallest cedar oh actually one thing I didn't check that that uh, the larger one never thought to look while I was looking at it ah oh, they're all direct so Oh, nice. So they're all direct so. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, 2000 litre capacity. I mean, it's a cedar. Select your seed. Use a ridge marker if you want to. Open your cover. Lower it. Turn it on. There you go. Cover open. All the usual stuff right so let's oh anything else in it lower it down switch it on a nice little that's a nice uh the sound of it's quite cool i'm not sure i'm familiar with that one 
not sure I've heard that before on a cedar. Sounds a little bit different to me. Ah. Nice. Which I quite like that. Now if I remember rightly from watching the stream, and we'll watch this really carefully to see. And we can prove now its qualities as a direct so. All the little things are all independent and they should all, you know, go up and down with the, yeah they are, look. Because I'm going up and down with the, with the ground, the undulations in the ground. Apparently that's new and it's pretty cool. I need little rear working lights on it too. I don't know why on earth the, the, the helper thought he'd just try and seed the grass, it didn't work. Cool. Turn those off. Right, should be able to use this one with the next one. So let's grab the old tank here. Which means should work with any of these, actually we should try that as well, because the, the, I'm assuming the tank will hook up to any of these. Um, I don't know for sure, but let's put the tank on. And we'll have a look at these pipes, so you'll see the pipes all nicely, um, you know, around the, nicely coiled, nicely coiled away there. And just back up to this. The DF2 plus NGS. And there go the pipes in. Always pretty cool. And apparently, so this then folds up for transport, you have to unfold it to put it down. Apparently it took them an awful lot of work to um, actually get those pipes to all nicely fit in there without them having collisions or anything. Actually, that doesn't seem too too bad at all. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we'll give this a go on here. What do we put on here? Oats, was it? No, canola, right? So again, it's a direct so. And it shouldn't be. Lift it, turn it on, select the seed, open the cover. Obviously, that's for the front tank. See that? Turn it on. Might be a little bit of a struggle, it's probably slightly underpowered. And again, these should travel up and down, I think. Can't see it quite so obviously on this one, maybe not then. I know they do want to, maybe they don't on all of them. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Okay. Now I suppose what we could do... Oh yeah, so what I did say I'd do actually is try and see, let's see if these pipes hook up properly. So we'll just bring this up here, drop this one off. Oh yep, sorry, of course I need to unfold it first. All the animations of the pipes, it's very cool. Drop it off. Pipes all uncurled. Now what happens if we use this? There's no pipes for it to connect to, so I'm assuming we won't see any animation going on here. Would be my guess. Yeah, no, there's no pipe connections. I didn't think so. Looking at it, because obviously there's no there's no corresponding pipes on the back. Nothing for it to connect to. So what about some of these others then?
well that one almost certainly so actually let's have a look so we looked at the cedars we'll, we'll use the big cedar in a minute i do want to try that one out uh oh so there's the optima that's the other in-game one that we have at the moment um right so the optima rs doesn't say it'll connect to the front tank so what's so 180 horsepower that's not bad actually for a nine meter planter take seed and fertilizer this one but only a 2720 liter capacity so you might want um, you might want a, an extra tank at the front interesting that additional wheel weights on the tractor recommended when using this tool there you go so let's have a look see what's uh see how it looks yep no options but what I love about this one is what you'll notice is its orientation. I think we've had a mod that's been a bit like this recently. I'm sure we've seen a mod recently that's like this as well. Um, this is the first one in game, I'm pretty sure. So you tow it like that. When you get there, you hook it up to the three point, which is actually there. Those wheels, I assume, fold out of the way. I don't know. Let's find out. And then this one. So the Monopill E Drive 224 II24 plant 145 horsepower, which again is next to nothing. That's a 12 meter seed at the planter that only needs 145 horsepower. Again, it doesn't specifically state front tank, but it only has a thousand litre capacity, so you probably want it really. That one's uh, seed and fertilizer, that one's just seed. So actually I'm curious about that then. And both of them are the same, right? So it tows it like this. Obviously this one's got fertilizer and seed. Not quite full because it's also including the front tank. So tow it like this and it's long but at least it's narrow. That's pretty cool actually, I like that. And when you get there, right, let's have a look and see what this does then. How do we do this? Right, so Kernel Optima RS. Thank you very much. Whoa, it's going to be quite a wait for this tractor. So then, presumably, okay, so we've got open cover. Right, fine. Presumably, it's not to switch between covers. It did take a little minute for me this morning just to try and get it full. Obviously, you can change your, your what you're going to seed. So, unfold. Ooh, look at that. So fold up those wheels out the way. Fold there. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that. No, so I'm, I'm not going to do it here. But then lower it down. That's pretty cool. Okay, so lower it up. Unfold it. Put the wheels back down. Prop it down. Disconnect. Done and then remember which way to go. Okay, so what I'm thinking is we should do is jump back one, the other way, two, three, there it is. Let's get rid of these cultivators, because of course the planters, they're not uh, direct so. So we'll get, we'll get our Mr. Worker doing his job on here, thank you very much. We'll get this field cultivated using Mr. Worker. He will do a terrible job because I've not lined him up properly. But that's my fault, not his, so that's okay. We'll leave him running. We've got him past the scary tree. That's the most important thing to do. You've got to be careful with them scary trees. And then how about we grab one of these ones? Depending on how we do, we might have another go with the... Uh, with the bigger cultivator later as well but let's grab one of these and we can go and seed one of the fields 
Now this does have a pipe there. Now is that just from its internal tank? Yeah it is isn't it? This thing's beast, look at the size of it. I'd be curious actually to figure out, I'm just very quickly to jump out. I'm assuming not, but you know, in the names of in the name of uh, scientific research, that's not going to be very neat. No, no, no pipe pipe hook up for your ex expansion tank, external tank. But it's worth a check. So I'll come back one. Let's go check this one out. So then, we then no, I don't remember, let's try and get this straight. Uh, were there no wheel options on this one? I did change the wheel options on something this morning. Well, I could change the wheel options on something this morning. No, okay, it is as it is. Tree. Sure is a nice piece of kit. I like that. Helper eye is blocked by an object. Oh, good grief, what's he doing? Let's not worry about that for a minute. So let's come and do this big field here. Open it all out. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Direct so, so it shouldn't have a problem with any of this. It sits quite a long way back actually, doesn't it? Fold it out. Lower it down. I mean again, so lift it, fold it, turn it on, select seed. So you'd have a ridge marker. Look at the size of that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna try that. That's huge. Okay. Turn it on. Boom, one pass, look at that. Where did, where, where did he go? Anyone see our worker? Oh, good grief, okay, anyway. Raise it up. And then in theory, and I haven't used I haven't used a ridge marker for a while. So ridge marker that way. Plant the nose of the tractor right in the middle of that line. And we're away. Should be relatively easy to do it in cab. So I haven't used the bridge marker for a while. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. That's perfect. Oh, when have I opened that? Change bridge marker again. This is a nice cedar. I like this. workers are too good they don't need ridge markers where we go and we don't need no ridge markers hang on where's he gone huh uh what um what do you reckon I, I think he got beamed up what is he doing over here because Unless I'm very much mistaken, he was supposed to be seeding, he was supposed to be cultivating a field 
He went, it's because it's too heavy? I mean, that's just bizarre. How on earth did he get over here? It's only going to make him struggle to... It's like, it's like playing snow runner. I mean, you know, I know the workers in this game could be a little bit hit and miss, but I mean, that's just... I mean, you know... Oh no, my green eyes have run out of water again. Um, I'm not sure what to say about that, really. I, d I don't really understand. That's very confusing. Anyway, okay. Let's try that again, shall we? Here's a field. Here's a cultivator. All you have to do is go up and down. D what? Okay. This could be a long day. There we go. Well done. You managed it. Congratulations. Okay, good. Uh, right. So actually, the logical thing to do next then... I kind of want to try both planters. <laughs> But let's let's give the other one a go. We've had a look at that one. Yeah, that is cool. I do love the whole tote behind you design, which actually is exactly the same as this one. So same principle. So actually both the planters are, are like that. That's actually quite good. Fortunately I've got a cultivated field, so that's okay. This is a beast, look at the size of it. It's huge. And this little tractor should have no problems with this at all, which, you know, given it's whatever it was, 100 and, what was it? Yeah, let's try and set this up, right. Planters. Yeah, 145 horsepower. That's amazing for a 12 meter planter. That's nuts. I need some bigger fields. How big's your tractor, Jim? What's its power? Oh, it's 145 horsepower. Well, there you go. What a coincidence. That's amazing. And again, nice ridge markers. Be quite impressive to see them extended out. But it's... it's. I mean, I'm not sure I've ever seen a planter like this. It's, it's sort of, you know, slim line. Low profile, if you like, I suppose. Mm, it's pricey but I could be tempted to get one of these mind you I haven't got any fields that justify something this big yet but one day well that's just awesome in a minute we'll do something that means I don't need to traipse up and down quite so much um and then probably towards the end we'll, we'll do another drive up with the big cultivator. Right, so let's have a look. So it needs to attach on the right hand side as we look at it. Which also means of course that lining yourself up at the at the field would be quite cool. So if we go all the way up. Spin it around. Trainer up. There we go. Drop it off. I mean, it might not be much power, but crikey, that's going to wobble a bit. First, need to fill the tool. Oh, did I not fill this one? Oh, that's a little bit annoying, isn't it? I mean, it's fine. I've got the tank, so it's not the end of the world. Right. So, should again be. Put some flowers in, shall we? So, we know the cover. Oh, but that's on the tank at the front. Uh, unfold. Folds up the wheels, folds out the ridge markers. 
Got a ridge marker out. <laughs> Lower it down. Turn it on. And again, I think those. Yes, yeah, so top. Are they going up and down individually? Actually, I'm not sure they are. I don't know. Not ideal for it with a ridge marker to, to do a funny line like this. That's going to do all sorts of funny things. But yeah, I mean, this is, you know, a 145 horsepower tractor pulling a 12 meter planter. No problem at all. But it's a very lightweight, sort of low profile, low fuss design, isn't it? Quite different large scale planter. Again, kind of like that. Let's get to the end. Don't particularly need that or that. Not for doing this. Whoa, steady. I mean that, you know, this is, it's not a huge field by any stretch, but it's a big-ish field. It's going to make very light work of this. No question. Where were... Does anyone see... Uh, okay. Houston, I think we may have a very strange problem. Uh, our work has disappeared again. Speaking of workers, let's see how he gets on with this. Right. Um, oh, wrong way. Sorry. Where? Wow, that seeded that field pretty quick. That's really good. I like that. Okay, where... How? How exactly? Hey, Noor. Is it the old job? How do you mean? Is it the old job? Is it? Is it a rubbish worker? So exactly... How did my worker manage to run? There's something very strange. Is it because there's no front weight on it? It's just sort of glitching out and doing strange things. Because how did he get across these rocks, past all these trees, um, and, and drive into that tree? Oop. That's just the weirdest thing. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, okay. This might be for the scrap heap then. Oh, that's a shame. I rather like this tractor. I, gu I guess I've never used it for field work and a wor with a worker then. Okay, well, rest assured, folks. It sounds like it's not the uh, it's not the it's not the new uh, cultivator anyway. So that's something. I guess if I watch it, it's not going to do it. It's just a combination of the old JCB with the with the worker, is it? I'm, I'm actually just going to leave it and see where it ends up because I'm curious, uh, um, just to see where it where it goes next. If we watch it, will it still jump somewhere else? Do you think, or or um, I'm going to sit and watch it, and see what happens. It's at the end of the row. It seems to happen when it gets to the end of a row. Right, it's at the end of a row. It's like one of those things, if, if, if no one's in the wood to hear the tree fall, does it make a sound? If someone's watching the worker, does it still go really weird? Or because you're watching it, it behaves itself. Look at that, see? See? Workers don't misbehave when I'm watching, because they mean it knows no biscuits. No biscuits if you don't, if you misbehave. 
Now I bet if I'm not watching it, it's going to do something weird now then. Okay, so let's, um, it's, it's done a good job of seeding that field though. Look at that, it's cracking. That's a nice seeder. Okay, I know we need to unfold it. Now I'm going to leave that there. We're going to jump out of that because I'm going to reset this tractor. We zero. Yes, I do. I do really, really need to reset it. Other end. Other end what? Hang on. No. See, so right, it goes wonky at this end. It's No, it is turning. I can see what have a problem there because it's struggling up and it really should have a front weight. So I'll forgive it that much. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so that's not right. Where are you going? Uh, okay. I'm just going to take my cultivator for a little walk now. That's basically what it's doing. Uh, well, there you go, folks. Um, have JCB will just go off roaming with my new Fernland cultivator. It's like it just goes for the most distant tree it can find. Um, okay, that's a bit odd. Yeah. Um, okay, I, um, I might get rid of that tractor then. Maybe that's the sensible thing to do. We'll reset it back to the yard in case we need it. In fact, we will. Actually, we will need it. What am I talking about? In case we need it. Of course we need it. Oh, we've got weeds coming up. Pesky weeds. That's doing a cracking job, that planter. Look at that. What a little 145 horsepower tractor. That's amazing. Love it. Cool. Anyway, carrying on. So we've still got a planter and a cultivator to try. We'll come back to those a bit later. So let's have some fun next. Uh, how's about... We try this one. So liquid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer or herbicide, of course, spread, sprayer, both sprayers, but standard stuff also front tank to go with it so what's I don't know why that's not full actually that's a bit weird but okay didn't do that very well did I so stop that for a minute actually oh look it's got a, it's got a full thing which goes up to 11 which is kind of strange does that mean it's 1100 capacity so crop protection all in game stuff so the Ixta the i Ixta B18 at a mere 26 and a half of your thousand euros. Uh, yep, fertilizer or herbicide sprays increase harvest output of your fields. 1800 litre capacity. Let's have a look. So, 80 meter, 24 meter, 28 meter, back to 18. So, if you've got different size fields, buy the big buy the big one at a grand total of 41 grand and then after that takes your picks it's pretty cool really it's quite nice to, I actually really like the design too it's nice to have a new one because I mean I've you know I've used the Hardy and the, the Coon Metris and the Deltas quite a lot I'm not a big fan of the Navigator so it's nice to have some new ones say in game um, and then let's have a look at this. So this is the extra 1100 comfort. So you have the comfort that you're not going to run out. And it is indeed 1100 litres, which explains why the uh, monitor goes up to 11, which does seem a bit odd. It's the front tank, really. But it's very cool. Again, I like the design. Nice little blue cable liquid thing. Oh, and that's that's the thing with this. Sorry, I should have. I should have. Yeah, if I get out a sec. There it is, look. Cables underneath the tractor. The pipes. So when you hook it up, 
there it is going through that thing which is a bit odd but okay goes all the way underneath the tractor hooks up at the other end so if we um, if I come back probably best if I do it out of the grass actually that would help wouldn't it so we can see if I drop that off bye bye pipes put it up we go the pipes it's pretty nice I like that so I honestly don't remember but I'm kind of assuming I got the biggest one because you know you would wouldn't you really when you're testing actually I might not have done actually on this on the, the, the three point mounted spray I might just have got the 18 meter I'm assuming actually no we don't know because they're both 18 and one of them I will have got the biggest it got to we could do this on a field but we don't need to and we don't we don't need to keep going back and forth it's really insane oh we've got this bit anyway so let's do this looks like our plant is finished so usual stuff fold it out they both got fog fertilizer I didn't put her beside in one of them lower the tank lower the front tank actually that's quite cool lower additional tank balance it out like that lights on the front indicators so we looks at lights have we how remiss. Actually, I like the indicators on this one, they're quite cool. And I think, is this one, one of these, is, I'm sure one of these has got lights on it. Or am I making that up? Probably better tell if it was dark. Detail on it's amazing. Hang on, we got a full set of lights on, so let's put all the working lights on and we've got the lights. I don't know what is that a light there? It's kind of hard to tell. Anyway. And then of course you select that and I'm assuming you can raise and lower. Yeah, lovely. Along with the back window, unfortunately, but never mind. All the way up to your tall crops, all the way down to your low crops. Switch it on. I mean, it's fertilizer sprayer at the end of the day, but it's not. I actually really like the design. It looks good. I like that. I was going to go organic on there, man's Maybe I'll change my mind. Lift it up. Lift up the front tank. I quite like my new tractor, we're not here to look at the tractors, but it's quite a cool tractor, I've been looking forward to getting this. Um, let's go with a slightly less noisy tractor for a change. Cool. What's making a noise? What have I left running? Is that that cedar? Have I left it on? Something's going. Feels like it might be that one actually. That's a bit odd. That shouldn't stay on when you've switched it, when you've taken it off the tractor. Yep, it's on. Most peculiar. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So next of our sprayers. Actually, we should check this and see if the the old dumb um, pipes connect up to this one as well. Does it say in store? So crop protection. 
uh, the IX Track T4 it doesn't specifically state that it hooks up to the IX Stra 1100 Comfort so I'd assume that no it probably doesn't have the pipe attachment so slight trick up its sleeve with or, with narrows or without I got it with because you normally would but actually it looks quite nice with standard ties it's a nice I'd really like the design of these I really really do yeah nice uh, yeah starts at 80 meters 24 I love to see the booms add on 28 32 36 40 there we go 40 meters 40 meters so let's get this somewhere where there's a little bit of space because I'm pretty sure I got the 42 meter one fairly certain <laughs> that is huge wowzers look at that So, oh, I've got a notification up. That's just I can't now. Can't see. Hello. Uh, fine. So, right stick up and down. Oh, I like that. To raise and lower the boom. That's it. Fold it. Turn it on. It's a sprayer. But it's a sprayer with a 40 meter width. Oh, and steering rear wheels. Very cool, and a four and a half, well, four thousand six hundred liter capacity. So it's got good capacity. It cost me a fortune to fill it up. That's awesome. Right. So lights. Oh, nice. very nice and so again is this I'm sure one of these has got lights on the boom again it's a bit tricky to tell because it's dark but if I put working lights on oh yeah there you go definitely does indeed <laughs> well with the boom that width you're gonna need it aren't you because otherwise how on earth are you gonna see what you're doing if it is not perfect daylight quite how far out does it go well, about 40 meters really, so roughly 20 meters on each side, I'm guessing. Huh? That's very cool. If you add the additional tank as well, well, you'll get more capacity. But I don't think the pipes will hook up. Let's go and have a look. We can try it. But, I mean you can do, it'll still work. I mean you're dead right. It's a very cool piece of kit, I've got to say. I need bigger fields on here, which is it's in my it's in my road map, shall we say. In my plans. I mean, you know, comes out a big one for your fertilizer, a small one for your herbicide or whatever really. Let's move that back. Hey, Missy B, by the way. Sorry, I didn't see you. I didn't see you come in. You just joined us. Oh, sorry. Don't switch the engine off. God, it's nice to have a quiet tractor for a change. I've got all these fabulous old tractors, which are awesome, but my goodness me, they're loud. Any sign of pipes? No. It's a bit difficult to tell. Slightly long undergrowth. No. So yeah, no, you don't get the pipe hook up, but I wasn't expecting it to. But you know, you do get the extra. So what would that be? Five thousand seven hundred liters in total. It's going to keep going a bit, and it looks nice. I really like the design of it. I really, really like the design. Cool. 
Nice. Okie doke. Alright, so that's that. I'll need that again in a wee while. Turn back to this one a second. And the last of our fertilizing pieces of equipment. Cook up some of the other side, isn't it? Yeah, because I must have brought it attached to the front or something. Okie dokes. Right. So, current working width. 24 meters. Hang on, sorry, we haven't looked at this in store, have we? So, fertilizer technology. Here it is, the Exacta TLX Geo Spread. Sounds like something you put on your toast. Uh, 3,900 liters, which is actually a pretty, pretty good capacity. Comes as it is, no options. But you know, it is a geo spread. Oh, look at the spreader unit, that's a bit cool actually. Uh, it's just fertilizer, it doesn't do lime sadly, um, which I did check earlier because I was curious. I managed to accidentally get rid of the, the uh, bruns yesterday when I was tidying up. Um, it says 24 meter, but it has a little trick up its sleeve. Because if you notice in our control panel, this is why I left the control panel up for things like this, it says current working width and it says L1 triangle change work width 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 45, whoa, 45 meters, 45, that's nuts. So that's even more than our little friend over there. Little, little friend. And that's ridiculous. 45 meters. So let's just do it right. 24. So 24. Can you change it on the fly? Yes. 28. 32. 36. 40. 45 <laughs> that's pretty impressive width and how does it do that what does it do that it does that it seems to change the angle at which it sprays at I'm not sure if there's anything obvious that yeah there's nothing you can visibly see changing that's pretty cool okay so lights nice yeah indicator is fine working lights that's just the tractors I think it is actually that's nice open the cover yeah how cool is that so it means you know if you've got really big fields you can expand it out to, to maximize your spread but then if you've got a little bit left over you can make it smaller or if you've just got small fields to start with or whatever you know i think it's amazing it's such a cool idea ah that's better so it doesn't really change i think maybe it wasn't really changing on the fly yeah it does oh yeah you can really see it actually if you change from 45 to 24 it's quite incremental isn't it if you go from 45 down to 24 you can really see the difference that's very cool I sound slightly disappointed that's not a line spreader as well so you can't have everything I like that that's quite cool right uh, actually you know what staying with the smaller tractor a minute let's try this I say I'm not a massive fan of these and actually we should look, so we'll spend a bit of time getting through the, the look, looking at the, whoa, sorry, 
looking at the grass equipment for a second. It's pretty cool. All these sort of rubbery skirts, it sort of hangs loose when it's folded up like that. It looks, it looks like the real thing, you know. It's like sheen to it. See the blades inside. It's pretty cool. Right. So, twould be then under mowers. So it's like, you know, it's equivalent to a disc point. So let's see. That's a fourteen four meter, seventeen grand, ninety horsepower requirement. Four meter, eighty five horsepower requirement. Twenty grand. So it's slightly more expensive. But that's it, no options, get what you get. You either like the colours or you don't. Actually, don't mind the cover and the colours there, actually, I quite like them. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's get in. So if you've not used one of these before, you have to unfold it. So it's, it's designed to, to travel behind the tractor. So you unfold it when you want to use it. That straightens it out behind, bring it sort of into line. You can usually, yeah, you can adjust the angle so it comes in a little bit closer behind the tractor, you can adjust it out again, it will swing out behind, and then you just, you know, lower it, turn it on, it's a mower. And I guess for that flexibility, that's actually quite cool. It'd just be another thing I'd have to, I'd, I'd have the opportunity to mess up really, but um, you know, it's all right. When you're done, switch it off, raise it up, fold it away, reorientates itself nicely back behind the tractor, and you're done. Yeah, nice. So that's that. So let's look at the rest of the mowing stuff we've got while we're here. So that was the 4140L. And then we've also got the next two. So the extra 732FT and the extra 7100T. So 732FT, 80 horsepower, 3.2 meter width, 732, 3.2. The extra 7100T, 10.2 meter width, 200 horsepower. So the, the interesting thing about these and some of the, some of the, the grass equipment you can do this not the last one but this one you can so you can it comes as Vicon so you find it in the Vicon equipment if you're looking by brand it's really nice really nice detail and that fabric bit at the back really looks the part or you can have it as Kvernland and if it's Kvernland then it's uh, 332 FT which is the equivalent model number just in the Kvernland colours but yeah it looks pretty cool. I go with the Vicon just because I went with default. And same with the 7100, right? But the 7100 has a little trick up its sleeve. So, 10.2 uh, meter spread, 200 horsepower requirement. It's quite high. Uh, but, probably the reason, actually. So, again, you can either have it Vicon, Vicon, Vicon branded, or Kvenland branded. So, it's either the extra 7100T or the Kvenland 353100MT. Depends whether you like it, you know, green and red or black, red and cream, really. Again, I got it in Vicon. But the difference to this one, by default, it comes as a Vario BX. Or you can just have it as the Vario. So the Vario's pretty much, I haven't got one, but I believe it's just a standard sort of mower. Get it as the Vario BX. And this is probably where the extra power requirement comes in. Doesn't change it, but makes it expensive though, it's a 75 grand mower Whew. Um, but it has an advantage so let's grab one of our tractors, he's done a cracking job of that field, look at that anyway uh, here we go, that's the one we wanted
So the only snag with these is there's a set of mowers, although it does actually say in here, I mean, it's fine. Jigsaw piece extra 7100T, jigsaw piece extra 732FT, right? So you can't put them together. But there is probably a pretty good reason for that, actually. a lot of weight sitting on the back of that so yeah so far as I can tell you cannot attach these two mowers together which is a bit of a shame because I was and you'll see why in a second and then I'll, I'll say why but okay so get the front one unfold it like usual does the thing lower it down switch it on and we're away we're mowing Right, at the back, switch to that, unfold. It's a little bit slow, takes its time, likes to think about it. And you'll see selected work mode, widespreading. Or swath dropping or a left swath or a right swath and basically behind each of the motors you've got one of these it's just a conveyor belt really it's a bit like um, the Merge Max really except you've got one behind each mower set so we'll need to do some hay so let's leave it on wide for now other than that lower it down leave it, switch it on and you're away. So the the front mower creates a reasonable it's a wide swath, but it is a swath, pretty much. The ones at the back are a little bit broader. I mean it's a mower really. They are pretty cool. I actually really, really like the design of them. I like the fact that even if you've got the extra bits, you've got the option to do that, right? So if you're going to come and ted it afterwards there's no point in putting it into a nice pretty swath i lift that up a minute come to our planted field anyway and i've sort of messed that up now i should lift it the front one up too but that doesn't matter And so maybe you might want to, not sure why particularly, left swath, okay, so you're just swathing on the left hand side, again, not a hundred percent sure why you do that, I suppose, I suppose if you wanted to do a relatively widespread but you were going around the edge of a field and therefore didn't want your grass right up to the hedge but you wanted to mow right up to the hedge that would be a good reason and then you've got the option then to do you'd have to lift them but you've got the option then to swap that it does work really well it's really neat course if all you really want is your grass or you've got a really 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 tiny tether then naturally you might want it with a swath in the middle so they both nicely put it straight in the middle and you've got your entire 10 metre mowing width in one swath which is pretty cool
So I'm, I say I'm a little bit disappointed that you can't put them together, but given those belts at the back, there's no way you could have them as a, as a three. It just wouldn't work, because obviously they've got to be behind the mower, so then you wouldn't have enough room to, put, to get your tractor in. So you can kind of see why, but even if you, I did check, even if you choose it without the, the extra swath belts at the back, whatever they were called, uh, you still can't connect all three together. So you don't lose out on that by, by having that if you want. How is it on corners? A little bit messy, but not too bad. Lift it up. Lift that up, hold it away. It's quite a lot of weight on the back. This is quite a chunky tractor, it's fine, but yeah, it's good. Okay dokes. Next. So logically next, maybe we'll use the tether, no? Just a thought. Bizarre, no? So let's take a look at this in store as well. So under tethers, so we've got a Vcon Fanex 604, 60 horsepower, 6 meter. Uh, we've got the sort of the Coon equivalent to this one, I suppose. So that's the GFXM12, which is 8.7 meters. This one's slightly bigger. So this one's an 11.2 meter tether. So somewhere between these two, which is quite nice. Um, hey, Tiny, how's it going? Uh, so let's see, quite a significant horsepower jump, 90 horsepower, over 40 but still not majorly crazy, no options is what it is, it is a Kvenland Tether, 24.5 grand, it's not too bad, again it's roughly between these two price wise, slightly on the more expensive side but it's also slightly closer to 13 meters than it is to 8.7 so you know uh, yeah let's give it a go how you been tiny ooh look lots of lots of swath so what was it that was a 10 meter mo so this is an 11 this is a, was it 11 meter I've forgotten already yeah 11 meter tether so it's going to do that swath it's a good width actually for that just over you just want it just a little bit wider than what you've mowed what what you has mowed it's a tether it teds there's nothing wrong with that that's the job good please to hear it tiny yeah i'm i'm actually enjoying this there's some just it fills a few gaps not that we'd ever necessarily have noticed there was gaps but you know they're not there's nothing's a direct replacement for anything that we've already got I would probably say and there's some pretty nifty features in some of them pretty nifty features you know this just this is just a tether but it fills a gap between two tethers we'd already got in game and sure there'll be other modded ones around but it, it's nice oh just missed the mower the mower's awesome love the mower Right, fold that away. Yeah, there's the so that that swath there is created just from the mowers. Brilliant. I mean, I know we've got modded mowers that do it do the same, but you know what? Right, so let's windrow. We've got yeah. Well, you just have to wash it all again, tiny. It's just simple. That's how you find out. Uh, now, <laughs> yeah, the sprayers, the the fertilising sprayers are fantastic. 
the, the little um, fertilizer spreader is amazing because you can adjust the width on the fly I mean it's just yeah brilliant some great stuff in here so windrowers so again what do we got so this is the Vicon Vicon and X1304 Pro because we are pros here uh, 12 and a half meter width so again it fits between the Kuhn GA9531 and the Lele Hibiscus which we've got already so it fills a gap it does fill a gap 12.5 meters 110 horsepower again a little bit more than well actually no it's not particularly much more on the price side it's roughly between these two yeah it's slightly closer to the size of the hibiscus than it is the GA and therefore it's slightly closer to the price of the hibiscus it's maybe slightly on the more expensive side speeds the same power requirements are equivalent yeah it's great so let's see what we got so you can either have it as a Vcon and X13 or for Pro, Pro or you get it as the Caverna 95 130C essentially the same it just changes some of the the red slightly different shade and change the label but that's about it and again you know I, I got it in whatever it came in standard so I got the Vcon so I unfold it I suppose think about it of course what's nice about it is that they're all aimed at being the same size right so you've got this is slightly wider than the tether which is what you want the tether is slightly wider than the mower which is what you want to make sure you don't miss bits you know as long as you don't do too tight corners you should be all right so lower it down you wouldn't normally turn it on in the middle of a whole load of bushes but we'll turn it on and we should get a nice lovely neat swath in the middle Nice and quiet, does the job. We have hay. I'm not running. I'm not running seasons, so pretty straightforward. Not sure how I missed that bit at the edge. Okay, that wasn't perfect. I could have done that neater, but. That you wouldn't normally do that. And there we go. That's really nice. It's so quiet, peaceful. It's also part of the tractor, of course. <laughs> Lift it up switch it off fold it up job done nice it's a neat it's a neat unfussy design actually I, I really like the design of it I do like the the hibiscus is pretty cool um, I love the fella what's it called Missy knows the one I'm talking about because I know she uses it um, they're, they're all awesome but um, actually I, I do like that sort of it's almost modernist you know simple sleek design it's quite cool right and so uh, one thing I've realized actually with the current set of equipment I've got I actually can't test because it's a bale wrapper and this baler is also a wrapper and I can't deactivate the wrapper so we'll need to get another baler to test that in a sec um, right so this is the Vcon fast bale Oh, I've been looking forward to this. So let's go into baling technology. And again, let's have a bit of a compare and contrast. Uh, so we go the VCOM fast bale. 110,000 to buy. Uh, 110 kilowatts or 150 horsepower creates 4,000 litre round bale. Turns grass hay or straw, uh, straw grass or hay into convenient bales and a bale wrapper packs grass bales in foil so they can ferment into silage so how is it price wise so let's see so the Roland uni wrap is 78,500 I was using that the other day on Shamrock Valley it's a nice bale wrapper actually it was pretty quick I was quite surprised and it's automatic 
automatic unload the bale into the wrapper and automatic drop off of the wrap actually did it drop off the bales automatic from the wrapper no it didn't it didn't okay so it's not fully automatic so but that needs 145 horsepower this one needs 150 right we've also got in game of course the um the coon fbp3135 that's 110 horsepower or 76 grand so it's it's equivalent by right? um this one mm, it's more expensive but there's a reason why it's more expensive unfold baler -da. so it's a baler wrapper fine it's got a bit sticking out the end of the back turn off automatic drop or we'll leave it on for a minute lower it down of course this is hay so it's not going to wrap this so that's fine switch it on and away we go now I haven't tried this before so this is new to me too but I have seen it in, in action saw it on the giant stream and watch that oh look at that oh that's pretty I'm too busy looking at it and going off the path <laughs> oh look at that so basically it's a bit like the um, it's a bit like the John Deere cotton harvester is how I've heard it alluded to because it's got an extra little chamber so while it's unloading the main chamber to drop your bale off it's sort of loading the grass into that makes a little mini bale and then it chucks it into the main chamber adds to it and chucks it out again I actually really like the design I like that little cage at the back the little frame I think that's just awesome I missed a bit that's my fault I'm too busy not paying attention it's so cool I love it I didn't even know such things existed so I'm I'm you know I was completely oblivious but that is just, I mean, how amazing is that? Because I quite like doing round bales, I quite like doing silos bales, and I quite like having an all-in-one bale wrapper. But the having to stop and go back and either unload manually or, you know, if you're just doing something like hay like that, or to, you know, wait for the bale to unload, stop, wait for the bale to unload, wait for the thing to close, and then crack on again, you know, it's a bit annoying, really. Right, so this first one's going to be hay. And hay, but not much. And of course, this is our weave mode. It's going slightly slower. No. So hang on. Am I right in thinking this is a wider swath, therefore it is automatically going slower so that it doesn't miss anything? Is that... That's what it feels like to me. Right, first bail out. There goes the wrap interesting as well because it it wraps it slightly differently to most wrappers that's brilliant look at that and it's and it's double wrap so it's wrapping at the same speed as it's bailing <laughs> yeah because we are bailing slower than we were doing the hay a second ago and I don't know if that's because it's detected its grass and therefore it's got to wrap it and it's bailing accordingly so it doesn't bail faster than it can wrap the bale possibly or whether it's because it's a thicker swath and it's trying to make sure it's picking it up so there's something to experiment with um, but that is that is pretty cool gotta say I mean that's just quick that's so quick it's not quite as fast as doing square bales um, because it's taking it slightly slower but equally you're also not having to come around and wrap them and okay because we use so I mean if you really wanted to go super clever then you get the modded swath dropping butterfly mower set so you've got your mowers on the front your baler at the back and you're away and it's a one pass mow windrow bale wrap no stopping no pausing and away you go course what we didn't try was turning off the automatic drop but it just doesn't you just have to remember to unload it I guess uh, it's pretty cool 
that I really really like I mean that's just going to make that's just going to make silage, I do a lot of silage bells on this map to try and keep the money going uh, that's going to make that so much easier what I did want to check and actually did we look so we looked in store we didn't really look in detail so let's just pop in and have a look so fast bail uh, so you've got you know you can change your foil colour um, again you can have it either Vicon or Kvernland branded but it's still just called the fast bail regardless um, and you can either have Trelleborg or Michelin tyres and that's it again slightly darker red but you know, other than that, it's just the stickers and the labels really that are different. It's cool. And what I did want to try actually, just to be sure, hmm, there it is. So this is my my bale auto loader. Switch it on. Ooh, switch it on. Hello. There we go. Whew. But you only have to press the square once. Perhaps I didn't leave it ready. <laughs> I mean, that's just going to be so quick. So quick. I did miss a tiny bit, but again, you wouldn't, you know, you'd normally take a little bit more time and attention, time, care, and attention over that. That is fantastic. So I guess the one thing we didn't have, uh, which was a little remiss of me, so um, if I get normal bail up, thank you very much, have it. We'll do a little bit more mowing. Note itself, always fold out the rear ones first because they're really, really slow. is great <clears throat> how cool is that there you go could go mowing off into the sunset ish tell you what actually this would be great for when I need to be mowing my roads I do like mowing the roads on this map there's my road covered in grass and all I have to do is come bow it I'll get a lovely line in the middle and just come along and bail it it's very cool nice and neat Yeah, so it was. I mean, I'm I'm very impressed with everything else too, actually. But it was the mowers and the and the baler that really got much, really got me. How much did I say? Uh, they were quite expensive, actually. They're pretty expensive, I suppose. Yeah, no, they are expensive because it's fifty-five grand, but seventy-five to have the Vario BX to have the swath thing on the back. It's an extra twenty thousand to put those on the back. But pretty cool. Oh, missed the road. Wow, how much did I buy? Oh, okay, that much. <laughs> okay. Okay.
Anyway, right, so if I jump back to... Nope. Why is my peculiarly misbehaving JCB? There we go. So just very quickly, because the last thing to do is uh, the wrapper. And I'm not even going to try and start a wrap. See if our JCB is going to behave itself after it disgraced itself earlier three times in a row. I must have, it's very very funny, I've never noticed that before. I must have just never used it in field work, or at least not with a worker, anyway. Okay. So, normal mower, no baler, rather. That's a wait. See, I'm going slightly quicker with this one, but. You then do this, you have to do this, this sort of inch forward, wait till you get to your 4000, take it back a little bit, wait for a bit, wait for a bit, unload it, do that, and away, so we'll get a couple of these out, inch forward, go back, Unload it. Crikey, look at that corner. How did I do that? Mm. I was never going to get all that properly. Okay, fine, that'll do. We don't need too many. that way. I can hear water. I can I hear water? It's over here. Why can I hear water? Isn't that funny? Anyway, uh, right. So... Use the class. It's nice and quiet bit of peace this time of day because oh my goodness me is it late I'm a real to cut bed of all of the days to work really late today wasn't it and so with our final piece of unexplored equipment though if you can stick with me I still quite fancy trying out the cultivator and the other planter uh, right so this is again will be under bathing technology God, you know I haven't used these for a while. I really should use these. I love these. Um, anyway, sorry. So, Cavernland 7850. It is a wrapper. Bell wrapper, Pax Crest, and Forza from inside edge. So the, the surface is quite... It's funny, I've never noticed that before, but it is quite, it is quite close to the surface, isn't it? I haven't got around to putting in rivers and stuff yet. So actually, how are we doing? So that's 22,000. So the only other in-game wrapper, so there's this Anderson one, which is 19,500. And then there's this one, which is very expensive, but has the advantage that it does square bales. And actually, I do like that one. Um, so price-wise, it's it's pretty much on the, on, the, on the thing, if you're just looking for a baler wrapper for round bales. Standard, no, sorry, foil colors, black, pink, green, white. Uh, wrapper design standard this is kind of fun or with bale on end turner I, I don't think they thought a lot about the naming of that I'm afraid to say it's not bale on end turner I think it just turns the bale so it sits on its end just guessing right um, and again like some of the other the grass work equipment you can either have it Cavernland as the 7850 or VCOM as the BW2850. Exactly the same, slightly different shade of red, different labels, different stickers. That's about it. But otherwise, the same. Is that a different wheel? No. 
So that's it. So I got it with the bale on end turner just so that we can try it. There's the angle. Yeah, yeah I should think so, yeah. It's funny that I've never, I've never just never been to a patch of the mat where I could hear it before now. Oh, so much more to explore. Pardon me. Right, so, like any bale of wrapper, I'd assume you just unfold it. It will bring itself out into position with the little bale on the end turner trailing behind. It's like you have a power tractor for doing bale wrapping. Pick up the bale. It's a double wrap, so it should be pretty quick. Doesn't unload automatically. Unload round bale. Puts it on the thing. Oh, that's very clever. It's literally just a metal plate that tips it onto its edge. Fair play. Some do that anyway. Um, some don't. I don't think that's you know that's just how it is really. But it does bail. It does wrap pretty quick actually because it's double double wrap, not just one. Tip it out. Tip it on its edge. Uh, hello. Mm, ah, there we go. Just wasn't quite hitting the trigger. Works pretty well, actually. Your your bail on end wrapper. How much was some? Um, how much was it to add it on? Oof, an extra 2,000 cripes. So, you know, if you've got slopey fields, it's pretty useful. And I don't suppose for a split second that there's any issue with it, but... Just to prove it. no particular reason to be these are now standard bales that have just been wrapped with a different wrapper that's all I did want to check the others just to make sure I mean they're all 4,000 litre bales so it should just you know oops which side should I go there we go bales okay uh, right no not there no yeah no Did I drop this off already? No, so let's drop that off. But I did unfold it, that's right. Or fold it, rather, should I say. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with how it's done that field. It's done a pretty decent job. A couple of patches it missed, it's just a funny shape, that's all. But yeah, 145 horsepower tractor with a 12 meter planter, you can't go wrong with that. Right, I know I'm driving this one actually to be honest. Okay, uh, here we go. This is where it kind of want to um, follow me actually because this would be so much easier, but we don't. If I recall, this needed 400 horsepower, which I don't think we've got in this tractor. So let's see how it does. Obviously, it'll be fine on the road. Uh, so that's what we got in this tractor. No, it could be least. I'm far too tight. <laughs> far too poor to buy a big tractor like that. 385, okay, so we're not far off actually. Not far off at all. <coughs> so what are we thinking folks? Are we uh are we liking the look of this? I'd say I'm enjoying this. 
The cultivators may be less exciting, they're not dissimilar to ones we've got elsewhere already, either in game or some of the other packs, but you know, again it's about variety. Um, I mean the other point about the cultivators is that all three seeders are all direct sow. So unless you're going to use your planters as well, um, yeah, slightly less, slightly less fast, but you know, still good. More stuff. I like, but I mean, I think some of the functionality otherwise in some of the others is brilliant. Yeah, the sprayers, the the um, fertilizer spreader, the mowing equipment, and all its gr all, all the grasswork equipment is all pretty cool. There you go, it's a cultivator. But again, 385 horsepower instead of 400, and it's it's absolutely fine. Because um, it was what 7.7 .7 meters. So I mean, there's you know the CNS is an 8 meter again. That's 400 horsepower. I didn't set a worker. Right, so let's leave him to that. I could be tidy, I suppose, and fold that up. Lift that up. Uh, where am I? Oh, wow, I did come a long way out, didn't I? Crikey. Lost my bearings for a minute trying to figure out where I was. did do that on purpose. I do like this tractor. There we go. Right, so... Again, like the other planter, so this one's the 9 meter one, but it's got a bit more to it because it's got all the individual seed boxes, and this one fertilizes as well. Actually, sugar beet would be kind of fun. But I do like that you tow them like this. I say I think we've had one of these as a mod recently. You tow them like this, and then when you get there, you detach it and you unfold it, and it just becomes into a three-point link again. I think that's fantastic. Neat for storage, easy to manoeuvre. There you go, proudly driving home with your brand new Cavernland Optima SX planter. Very happy chappy. So let's see, goes that side. Oh, you better hurry up, Mr. Tractor, because it's not going to be long before I catch you up. Mr. Worker. There we go. Get out there. Connect it, lift up, right. So, unfold. 
folds up the wheels out of the way gets us all ready for a little bit just for the heck of it use a ridge marker lower it down switch it on and we're away and the texture's not much different again is it yeah the individual little sort of stations bobbing up and down a bit like the cedars some of the cedars we were looking at earlier is that, is that me or is it just doesn't look like oh yeah there it goes excellent so, I mean it's a plant but um, yeah it's just slightly different design some of the other ones we've got got your ridge marker And you're away. Quick decent speed. Crikey, them weeds are appearing quick. Grief. Even for the weeds, that's pretty fast. And there we go. I think that was the last uh, last bit of equipment. Any special requests? Anything you want to see again? Something you want to? I don't know. Whatever. I'm quite happy enjoying myself. So. This might be quite fun to see the 40 foot sprayer on a field. Ooh, maybe it's a herbicide. Mm. Get rid of those pesky weeds. Sorry, wrong button. Don't need that either. Sorry, we went the wrong way. Big pardon. I'm kind of curious, actually, in a real world application, how long is the boom on this thing? I say real world, you know what I mean? If you were actually trying to do your fields. move away a little bit that's quite a loud tractor I think I need to become a little more modern in my tractors <clears throat> they're a bit loud but yeah so that's about it really I mean plenty of bits of kit some nice little features that we don't already have certainly not with in-game equipment some of them might be in uh, modded equipment but certainly not in-game lots of nice features uh, you know the changeable th these ones are great right so having these with adjustable boom widths is great if you buy the longest one you've then got all the other ones underneath so you can really change and make it more efficient for the size of field you're using um, you know the fact that the fertilizer spreader is adjustable on the fly that's amazing um, obviously the mowing equipment the bale is the real big thing that's that's brand new something we just don't have and will make such a difference uh, the mow is good, slightly disappointed you can't hook the two together and they're a little bit expensive. We have something modded that will do something similar, but again, 
different design, different brand, just for a bit of a change. It's nice, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean the plow, the plow and cultivator is a great combination. I love that. Uh, so yeah, there's there's some good stuff here. I think it's. Uh, I'm I'm actually really looking forward to using some of this equipment. Really looking forward to using some of this equipment. I think we'll suddenly. I already had some Vicon and Convertland equipment on here, but I think we'll be using some more. So yeah, this is basically going to do this in no time. There are patches of this that are already double fertilised. Both levels of fertilisation. Yeah, it certainly is an impressive width. Stick with the modded one. What? The mower? Yeah, I'm definitely using this one. And I I say I'm a little bit disappointed that you can't put the two of them together to make one triple set butterfly mower. Um, but, you know, I get excited by shiny new stuff. So, um, whoa, I will, uh, yeah, I will definitely be using the, that. I will definitely be using the new baler. Because um, I say I'm doing a lot of baling on here. A lot of silage baling, so um, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be good. Uh oh, looks like we've had a worker collision over there, but that's fine. I mean, I say the cultivators, they're cultivators really. Um, that I don't think they had a great deal, particularly necessarily, um, but you know something we don't really have in that brand. I like the fact that some of the grass equipment just fills the space in terms of size and that they've, they've been designed to come together as a set so that you can use them as such. Um, uh, you know, that they work together with a 10 meter mower and 11 meter, cult uh, 11 meter tether and a, is it 12 or 13 meter windrow? I mean, that's that's pretty cool. I really like this. I really like this because I like the fact it's adjustable width. I actually really like, I just really like the design of it. I just think it looks really good. So I'm tempted to get one of these. Ooh, it's difficult though. Probably make more sense. I'm still a small setup at the moment. It would make more sense to have the uh, the spreader rather than the sprayers. Oh, what's nice about it is there's a bit of everything, right? So you've got a plough, you've got some cultivators, you've got some seeders, some planters, you've got some fertiliser and protection technology, you've got mowing equipment and balers and wrappers and, you know, headers and windrows and, or a windrow and a tether, you know, you've got, you've got a bit of everything. So there's, you know, no matter how you play in your farm, there's going to be stuff you might want to be interested in using. Personally, I could see myself using all of this stuff and just having a Cavernland farm. I just think I, I really like the design of it, but I probably won't. But yeah, definitely a pretty useful width, without question. I mean, that's just huge. Because is that so? So it's not quite as wide as the Rubicon, but it's not far off. No, I've never owned one of those yet. I really need to move up to one of those. That's a lot of money to spend on a fertilizer spreader, isn't it? Uh, what's the capacity now? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's cute. Good. Right. Well, there you go. So that's all of the um, all of the stuff from the new Cavernland and Vicon equipment pack, the new DLC for Farming Simulator 19. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful, you know, found out a few things about some of the equipment that's on offer, uh, this one's a cool thing, love that, brilliant, um, 
yeah there's just a load of stuff and i think there's some pretty neat features so i'm i'm I, it's a good addition to the game i you know it may not be for everybody it's up to you certainly maxed out my slot count by having all of this stuff Actually, i didn't look at slots how are we slot wise uh so so the plow is seven slots cultivator smaller cultivator 11 logical what oh no larger cultivator 11 that makes more sense smaller cultivator 6 14 12 10 that's quite heavy actually 8 yeah it's it, it, it's heavy-ish on the slot count has to be said 22 for the Optima RS that's quite high 26 for that sprayer but it has got a 40 foot boom 23 for that 19 for that that's a lot for a front tank 10 that's more reasonable yeah so there's you know the bay the mowers i mean that actually they're not that bad actually 10 and 8 that's not too crazy six reasonable not too bad the bale is 18 which is again it's not it's hardly surprising uh given some of the functionality and some of these kits some of these pieces of equipment that they'll be a, a bit heavier on the slot count but um Ooh, nice turny wheels at the back. Look at that. Good view of that. But yeah, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you, yeah, uh, you know, it's given you some indication whether you you might be interested in some of this equipment. And uh, you know, just had a bit of fun on the way. Crazy, crazy goings on with my JCB. Um, <laughs> learned a few things about them anyway. And um, yeah, I think I shall certainly be using some of this. Uh, relatively soon I've just got rid of some equipment to make some space so it is time but yes I hope you enjoyed watching if you did likes and subscriptions are very much appreciated and uh, I hope to see you on the next one thanks very much for watching bye for now